if we're and statements, those typically are the ones where I've got two endpoints and they come together. So this looks like it's an and statement. And and statements, when we have absolute value inequalities, typically are when we've got the arrow pointing at it, the less than. If they're ors, those are the ones where our arrows draw out from each other. And typically when I'm looking at an absolute value of those, it's a greater than. So that's always my first hint I'm going to be looking for on these. You know, is it going to be an and? Is it going to be an or? Well, this one looks like it's an and because it comes together. So where am I going to come up with my other information, though? Where am I going to come up with what's in here and what's here just given what they give me here? Now, here's how this works. We're going to do a little bit of a distance part here first. How far is it to get from negative 4 to 6 distance-wise? 10, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to find the distance, and we're going to cut it in half. It's almost like we're finding a midpoint. Whatever value we get out of that is what we are going to end up putting in as our solution part of things. So we're going to do a little side work here. All right, we know it's an and. With the little colored in dots, even though, I, again, I don't like they do that, I know it's going to be or equals to, because if it was an open dot, it would just be less than. Whatever that middle point is, that midpoint between the two, that's going to be our solution. So if I find that middle point, I'll stick the answer here on the end. So then I start to look, and again, it's based on distance, and we'll talk about that. If we get a negative, we don't like that. When we get in here, we're always going to use x, and there's one more little part. So you're like, okay. So I found this middle point here. Okay, they're five apart. So I look at this, and what I need to have happen, and this is the part that's trickiest to explain, I look at this originally, and if I wrote this as an inequality, just kind of watch this part for a second. My original inequality here would be I'd be in between negative 4 and 6. To write an absolute value inequality, I need these two numbers on the outside to be like positive and negative 5, positive and negative 6, something like that. So one of the ways I can come up with my other answer, and this isn't my favorite way of doing it, but it's one of the ways it keeps getting explained in all these books, is the closest I could get value-wise would be to go for negative 5 and positive 5. Well, how would I get there? Well, if I look at a number line, okay, if I started at 6 to go to 5, I'm going left one, right? If I'm starting at negative 4 and I went to negative 5, I'd be going left one. So I'd use x minus 1 to show that I had to go left to get to this new 5 and 5, and I'd get this. That's kind of tricky. At least to me it seems kind of tricky. So I kind of played with it because I like playing with things like this to see if I can come up with something that's a little bit simpler sometimes than what you'll see in a book. Here's my idea, and I won't be offended if you look at me and go, yeah, their idea is better than yours. Well, those things happen sometimes. If I take that same problem, and we're, we're going to do one more of these too, just, just to be sure. There's some of the ideas of theirs that I like, but... There's one thing I want to change. <coughs> so let me get my endpoints colored in here. All right, here is my way of doing it. I looked at it and I said, okay, if I wanted to find the middle of this, I'd do like I did before. I'd kind of go, okay, so where's my midpoint going to be at? My midpoint's here at 1. <coughs> Whatever that midpoint value is, to me it made sense because this happened, worked every time. I'm just going to do x and the opposite of my midpoint. Okay, So this would always be 
the opposite value of what my midpoint is. So if this had been negative 1, I'd make it plus 1, and we'll see that again. Then the answer part is just the distance from the midpoint to the end. How far is it from 1 to 6? It's 5. How far is it from 1 to negative 4? It's 5. And that gets me to it. To me, visually, that's easier than figuring out how do I get this back to a middle point? How do I get those the same? It's just find the midpoint, find the distance from the midpoint to the end, I'm done. Is basically all I'm doing. They're like, okay, why don't you pop another one up here? Just because this seems a little odd. Okay. Let me do your example 10 here. We will try to simplify here a little bit. All right, I got negative 6 on one end. We've got 9 on the other here. I'll simplify this one a little bit. All right, so we're coloring in the middle. So is this one an and or an or? And. Because again, when we go to the middle, typically those are the ones we have in common. So those are ands. So whenever I do an and, I know a couple things right away. I know it's going to be less than, because that's how ands work. At least we're back to the parentheses now, which means it's just going to be less than. It's not or equal to. That would be a bracket. So now I start thinking about this, and I'm like, okay. Again, I need my midpoint. Now I can either visually count with my fingers in if I have the lines, or remember, to find a midpoint, you can always add up your two endpoints and divide by two. So here, let's see, so that'd be three. So three divided by two would be three halves or 1.5, okay? So my midpoint is positive 1.5. But like we said before, when I'm trying to create this inequality, I have to do the opposite of that. And this time I'll show you where that's coming from. So then to figure out what my answer part is, I just figure out the distance from the midpoint to either one of my endpoints, which in this case I believe is 7.5 or 7.5. And that'd be it. You're like, but how do I know that you know that this is actually working? Okay, let me show you what would happen if I actually worked this out now. If we were working this out, remember we said, okay, it's an and, so I'd leave my first inequality alone, and then for my second one, I would do the two things we talked about last week. I'd switch the sign, and I'd flip my arrow. And then I'd solve these. So I'd go, okay, so let's see. If I go along and I add my 1.5, x is less than 9. And if I add my 1.5, x is greater than negative 6. x is greater than negative 6, we're going to the right. x is less than 9, we're going to the left, and I've got it. Okay? So that's what I'd tell you. When you see your number line, Midpoint, whatever sign is, we're going to go opposite of that in here. And I'll do example 11 so you can see how a plus would work. And then just find the distance from your midpoint to the end. That's going to be what goes here. I never can understand why books want to try and make this stuff complex by doing the other things with numbers, but oh well. All right, example 11. So we've got negative 8, and we've got 0 here. We've got brackets. We're going out. All right, you know the first question that's coming. And or or? Or. Or, we're going out. Okay, they both start with O. So I go, okay, so, all right, so let me get this. It's going to be greater than with an or. And it's the or equal to, because it's a bracket. So I get here, and I go, okay, so let's see. I need to find the midpoint of these. Well, the midpoint in this case, now this is where I gotta be careful. You're like, the midpoint's negative four, so do I put negative four here? 
No. You're like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, that goes in here anyway. Opposite of negative 4 is plus. So you can start to see, oh, that was a positive. I switched it to minus. Here my midpoint was negative. I turned it to plus. Okay. Well, then what about the distance? Same thing. Distance is always positive. So how far is it from negative 4 to 0? It's 4. And I'm done. Okay. So just an opposite in here. And then my distance to get to my value on the outside. That's all we're doing with those. Okay. So when you're doing 23 through 30 in the book on that assignment from Friday, that's, that's what you're up against. But again, we'll have time to go over questions with that if you're getting stuck as we go.